an old hag like you isn't worth having as my wife. I'm divorcing you. My husband I had been with for a long time said. I swallowed my arguments and reluctantly accepted his demand. He hadn't realized what a fool he was then. My name is Christy. I had been supporting my husband Dan while working as a nurse. His salary had been raised a little by little over the years, but it still wasn't possible to live solely on his paycheck. We had our struggles, but we made it to this day by supporting each other. Thirty years had passed since we got married. It had been wonderful for me. I enjoy balancing home and work life, and above all, being with them was still my greatest joy. We didn't want to have kids, so spending our time together without distractions was pure bliss every night. Dan never strayed from the marriage and put all his effort into his work for us. Maybe he wasn't so good at it, so it took a little longer to be promoted compared to his peers, but I didn't care. Better than having him overworked and end up in the hospital. It was a time for fresh graduates to join his company. Hey, guess what? I am appointed as a trainer of new employees for the first time. Wow, congrats! You're finally recognized! He downed a beer happily without leaving a drop at dinner. Before him, the role was taken by his peers and seniors. After all, it was an important position that could only be entrusted to employees who produce a certain level of result. He had finally been appointed for that. Watching him animated with joy made me delighted. Maybe I will get a raise if I do well and put more effort into my other job too. Don't push yourself too hard. I took a real drink myself as I nudged an elated down. I had no doubt about us continuing to have a happy life forever, even though there was no promise for the future. Dan welcomed the new employee, Mary, as his trainee. She was beautiful and charming, so her co workers treated her fondly. The ones with a big age gap saw her as their daughter, and the ones close to her age eyed her as their potential girlfriend. Everyone was attentive to her, and Dan, who was closer to her than anyone else, got to see her charms up close. She naturally relied on him for anything. Whenever he taught her a job, she thanked him with a smile. For someone who really got praised, being appreciated by her made him truly happy. He was fond of her as a trainee at first, but before he knew it, he was enamored by her. Eventually, he started to mention her at home. I could sense a strange intimacy in his words. Even though he said she was a pain in the neck. I had been with him for so long that I had no intention to be suspicious and question him. I became more mature and wiser. I thought it was no big deal if a rare occasion of having a young and cute girl around delighted him. I get excited too when I see a good looking guy, but it was only an attraction and nothing compared to love. I believe it was the same for Dan. I pushed my anxiety all the way to the back of my head, but his merry fever continued without a sign of coming down. On the contrary, it grew hotter and hotter. Mary is a true beauty. It's not just because she's young, it must be her effort she puts into it. Maybe you will look better if you put more effort too. He started saying a terrible thing he had never done before. Oh man, why haven't you done it? Mary would have taken the initiative. I guess she's very different from you after all. He compared me to her at every opportunity and sighed heavily. As you would think, I got a bad feeling. The hunch soon became a certainty. Hum, please divorce me. When we were eating dinner, he said as if he was commenting on the weather. Hmm? You're okay being alone, right? I was speechless, and he carried on. Mary is so vulnerable. Compared to you, she needs me. I turn out to be a kind of a man someone can rely on. 
He joyfully said as he raised his left hand in front of my face and pointed to the wedding band the same as mine. Mary complimented me when she saw this. She said it was wonderful that I have been cherishing you for 30 years and admired me. Seeing him as cherry as a child, I could only feel sorry for him. Mary was talking about a guy who cherished me. She never mentioned a guy who divorces me for her. He was completely drowned in and blinded by the love not suited for his age. Wait, why don't you think about it a little more? I did, and this is my conclusion. You became an old hag anyway. You're not worth being my wife. I'm a man respected by such a young girl. He called me an old hag, and I wondered if he hadn't noticed the deep crow's feet around his smiling eyes, if he hadn't seen his receding hairline a year by year, and if he hadn't considered his far out of the fashion that made him look like an old timer. Okay, if you say that much, but you won't regret it. Of course not. He nodded confidently and guzzled a beer like it was a celebration. It was so sudden and I couldn't think straight, so I asked him to give me some time. The next day, I decided to investigate the relationship between Dan and Mary and called a friend who also worked with them. I had been married for so long that I got to know some of his colleagues well. I never thought that I would use this friendship for something like this though. After briefing a friend over the phone, she made time to meet me. How have you been? You got some drama going on. I know, right? I'm so confused about this. I felt more embarrassed than anxious, but I asked her what she had seen and heard in the office. Honestly, everyone knows Dan is chasing after Mary. She rolled her eyes and smiled. He had never been dependent on before. It must have gone straight to his head. He seems to be confused with a feeling of gratitude and love. Does Mary seem to feel the same toward him? Let me ask you instead, do you think so? A charming girl who everyone likes? I shook my head no. I haven't said a word to Dan, but she is aware of his feeling toward her. She was trying to find the right words, but gave up and let out a small sigh. How to say this? She says his approach is wearing her out. I forgot my anger for a moment and felt pity for him. I was right. That was drowning in self-satisfied love. He wasn't able to differentiate praise in recognition of the man and a genuine appreciation for a colleague who taught her the job. Mary didn't want him to have a wrong idea, so she commented on his wedding ring but I guess he took it the opposite of what she aimed for. He even showed off his bare ring finger in front of her. I'm so embarrassed for him. I fanned my face with a hand to cool off, but it was an adamant just like Dan's self-satisfied love. My friend told me more about Mary, and I became interested to meet her in person. My friend called her on the spot. She agreed to come out right away. In a short while, a pretty girl walked up to our table. Hi, I'm Mary. It's my pleasure to meet you. She had a very good manner for a young girl. I thanked her for coming out and prompted her to sit across from me. I'm sorry to bother you out of the blue. As you already know, I'm Dan's wife. He has been a wonderful trainer to me. She smiled like an angel. It sounds like he has been giving you unwanted attention. She became a little awkward and nodded her head. He's very good at explaining the job, but he's an idiot. I apologize on behalf of him. Seeing her reaction, I had no doubt that he was nothing but a nuisance to her. I actually have a boyfriend. Oh, I didn't know. It seemed Dan never even checked if she was already in a relationship. Apparently, her boyfriend worked for a different company his father founded, which meant he was a successor. While he was in a training to be the future CEO, 
She refused to depend on him and held a job of her own to build a healthy relationship. They planned to get engaged once his training was finished, and then get married and move overseas when his transfer was decided. It sounded like she had a bright future ahead of her. Listening to her fearlessness, I felt like I was hearing myself when I was younger. I too wanted to build a strong marriage and worked hard alongside them for 30 years. The marriage I treasured wasn't as important to him as to me. The truth was swelling up my emotions. I see, then cut that out of your life completely. You're a beautiful girl. Watch out for many more creeps that come close to you. I envy and admire your future. We continued to chit chat for a little more until they had to go back to the office. On the way back home, I stopped at the attorney's office and discussed my divorce. Dan was supposed to come back home for dinner. I normally cook myself, but I had to take away all pork chops and champagne that night. Hmm? Is it your birthday today? No, it's for our farewell. I told him that I went to see a lawyer who would contact him shortly. His face was stunned for a second, but immediately changed to a big smile. Thank you. I'm starving, but let's have a look at the terms I propose before we eat. While I set up the table, he hummed some light-hearted tunes as he went through them. He was scribbling additional notes in a way his pen was dancing in the air. What a cheerful handwriting compared to the gloom I felt seeing the lawyer. We eventually had our last supper together. He must have been relieved to get rid of an old hag like me. He downed two cans of beer. I picked up the cans laying next to him who was dozing off on the sofa and brought them to the kitchen. Before dropping them in a bin, I crushed one of them as hard as I could with my hand, and then I dropped the deformed can into a bin. Goodbye, good riddance. I whispered to Dan, who was sleeping, and left the home I spent 30 years of my life with him. While waiting for the divorce to finalize, I found a new apartment and moved in. I had been working all this time, so there was no financial hardship to start my new life. Contrary to my worry, it was refreshing and carefree to work and cook for myself. I enjoyed my new life feeling like a young singleton once again. The portion of money I used to buy beers for Dan went to my new cosmetic and clothes instead. I felt myself brightening up. As for Dan, he depended all of the housework on me, so he started to look shabbier and shabbier, which eventually made Mary keeping distance from him. In addition to the already apparent signs of aging, he became even more careless. No wonder she didn't feel good being around him. Still, he mistook her distance for shyness, not disgust, and to everyone's surprise, he proposed to her. Of course he was declined. It was an unforeseen event for him, and still he couldn't easily give up on a girl he chose over his marriage. Again, to everyone's surprise, he intruded on her apartment, and her boyfriend called the police. He was almost taken by the police, but Mary refused to put a charge on him out of her kindness. The matter was settled with a stern warning. The bad reputation at his work didn't settle as quickly as incident. Soon, he was known to be a creep who divorced his wife to become a stalker. Undeniable rumors were spreading throughout the company. He was never a prominent worker, so the company easily dismissed him. He was abandoned again. Out of desperation, he started gambling with all the money he had. After seeing Mary's boyfriend, he believed she would change her mind once he became rich. Of course, he had no talent or luck in gambling. Only the ever-increasing debt had kept him company. He finally had to sell the apartment we lived in and moved into a trailer park. Even in such a miserable state, he still had Mary in his heart. He waited for her outside of his old office, but he never got to see her again. 
She had gotten married and had already moved abroad with her husband. He was in total despair without any emotional support and gave me a call after a long while. His voice over the phone sounded way older than I remembered, like he aged years in a matter of several months. Please take me back. His voice trembled. I was silent for a moment and then spoke softly. Our relationship was thrusted into a bin with a can of beer that night. Goodbye. He was calling my name as I hung up on him, and then I blocked him for good. I put my phone in a bag and went out. The friend who told me about Dan and Mary was coming out to dinner with me. Having a new fulfilled life, I had told her that I wanted to go to a good steakhouse. Pork chop? Okay, but why? Hmm, for farewell? What the? <laughs> I was walking in the air from the excitement to celebrate the true end of my old chapter.